If Islam really promotes respect for Jesus, why does it portray him as a total failure? Muslims maintain that Jesus was one of Allah's mightiest prophets, but if we take a closer look at their claims, we can see that if Islam is true, Jesus was the most stupendous failure in the history of the prophets. Since he started preaching Islam at birth, according to the Quran, he had more than 30 years to convince people to submit to Allah. But after his death, the children of Israel were divided into two broad camps. Those who believed his message became Christians, all of whom were guilty of the worst sin imaginable, shirk, or associating a partner with Allah, while those who rejected his message were guilty of rejecting one of Allah's mightiest messengers. So whether people believed in Jesus or rejected him, they would all ultimately be condemned and cast into the hellfire. Jesus didn't manage to win a single lasting convert to Islam. His devout Muslim followers were all led astray. Who led them astray? This is where Muslims like to claim that the Apostle Paul deceived the early Christian community. Notice that this would be an admission that, according to Islam, all the work that Jesus did came crashing down due to corruption. But it gets worse, because Islam doesn't actually teach that Paul corrupted Jesus' message. Islam teaches that Allah corrupted Jesus' message when he tricked people into believing that Jesus died on the cross. According to the Quran, Jesus didn't die by crucifixion. But all four Gospels say that Jesus died by crucifixion. Where did people get the idea that Jesus died by crucifixion? They got it from Allah, who miraculously disguised someone to make him look like Jesus. So who's responsible for corrupting Jesus' message? Allah. The poor Islamic Jesus spent his entire life preaching, only to have his life's work sabotaged by the God who promised to protect his followers. So according to Islam, Jesus accomplished absolutely nothing of any lasting significance. We have no record of his Muslim disciples or of Jesus preaching anything similar to Islam. The Islamic Jesus was a total failure, and Muslims claim to respect Jesus. What about Paul? Does Paul also insult and degrade Jesus with his message? Not at all. We have a good summary of Paul's view in Philippians 2, where Paul quotes an early Christian hymn. Paul tells the Philippians, In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Paul certainly isn't insulting Jesus here. Paul says that Jesus, being in very nature God, didn't consider that equality with the Father something he had to hold on to. He took on human nature and died on the cross. He then returned to his glorified state, and now every knee will bow before him, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. This means that Adam, and Noah, and Abraham, and Moses, and King David, and yes, especially Muhammad, will all bow before their risen Lord. On a related note, since Paul was quoting a first century Christian hymn, we know that the earliest Christians were already singing songs about the deity of Christ and the Incarnation. But the hymn also draws a distinction between Jesus, who is God, and the Father, who is God, which means that we can't understand the earliest Christian worship without the doctrine of the Trinity. So, 
for you Muslims who've been told by your scholars that belief in the deity of Christ arose centuries after the time of Jesus, you need some new scholars, preferably some who don't constantly lie to you. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In case you stumbled upon this video while browsing or searching, I wanted to let you know that it's part of a series comparing Paul and Muhammad. So if you'd like to see the full series, be sure to click on the playlist. If you're already in the playlist, you're about to see how Muhammad's revelations insult God. Paul's don't.